my beautiful MK Love fam. Welcome back. It has been uh, a long time since we've chatted. It's actually been over a year since I've uploaded a video on my YouTube channel. I kept you hanging. The last video I posted was me giving you an update for my first trimester. I am now nine months postpartum. What? I have a nine month old daughter. It's absolutely wild. So we have a lot to catch up on. I want to give you an update for what happened for the rest of my pregnancy and then I'm going to go to have a separate video for my birth because I feel like it deserves its own video because it was really really special and then I'll give you an update for my postpartum because holy crap there was a lot of stuff I was not prepared for and to be quite completely honest I dipped down to the bottom of the emotional guidance scale and I have been rebuilding myself for the last three-ish four-ish months I feel back in alignment which is so good. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, then you probably missed a lot of behind the scenes because that's kind of where I've shared a lot. Um, but yeah, grab a cup of tea. You'll probably need it. And um, yeah, I'm so glad that you're here. Anyways, so let's do, we'll go back. So I did my first month, uh, first trimester, which basically was crazy. I was in bed, blah, 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 blah. Second trimester, I found out they had interstitial cystitis. <sighs> Same symptoms as a urinary tract infection. My doctor was like, you know, you don't have this blah, 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 blah. I'm like, dude, there is something that is wrong and you're not cutting it. Basically, I channeled my angels and they helped me self-diagnose myself with interstitial cystitis, which is basically the same symptoms as a urinary tract infection, um, which meant I had to change a lot. I started following the medical medium, um, drinking celery juice. <laughs> Um, having his heavy metal detox, I cut out gluten. I was already vegan, so eating predominantly, eating plant-based. Um, I had to cut out, what else did I have? Oh, caffeine was another one, which wasn't hard because I drink rooibos tea, which is herbal, um, but it was the chocolate. That was the tricky one. Um, I had to cut out canola, which is in everything. Um, and yeah, and I'm doing fine. The beautiful thing about having a baby <laughs> is that your hormones start to bring things to the surface that you couldn't see when you were just going on with your normal life because your body is under such strain when it's creating a brand new life there's a lot of stuff that goes down so I'm really really excited that I figured that out but it wasn't fun it wasn't fun at all um, and with that what was I gonna say I've got so many things going on in my head I'm like ah! How are you guys? I'm just so excited to be back again, but I'm also like really, really nervous to make this video because there's things I'm gonna be sharing that I'm kind of like, I haven't really told anyone, you know? Um, what else? My brain is all over the shop at the moment. <sighs> Maybe we should just take a breath. You ready? Breathe in. Breathe out. <sighs> Okay, I feel better already. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't do that before I pressed play, play, record. Um, also, I'm filming this on my phone because I couldn't figure out the camera settings for my actual camera. I couldn't figure it out. I was like, oh, I hope this works. Anyways, so interstitial cystitis, all of that came to the part, blah, blah, blah. Oh, basically, I was born with this condition. It's basically a condition to do with the liver, right? Um, and I was born with it. I went back through my mom. When my mom was born, she had this because she then gave it to me, my brother and my sister. And then I figured out that my grandmother had this as well. Um, yeah, anyways, I feel like I just need a brush over that. Um, it was important, but not really. Another thing, I developed this huge, friggin' huge growth. I mean, if you don't want to see anything graphic, then just look away for five seconds because I'm going to pop it on the screen so you can actually see what happened. I had this huge growth that came up and it started getting really big in the, in the second trimester. It got up to about three centimeters wide and about, I would say almost 0.7 of a centimeter high. It was absolutely huge. And now it's almost gone. Hormones. Okay, then what happened in third trimester? Oh, I got, um, <laughs> had no energy. I had iron deficiency anemia. I had to go to the hospital and get an infusion, which was another experience. Um, I then had sciatica. My, it hurt to stand. I'd have really, really sore heels. So yeah, pregnancy was wild, absolutely wild. Um, but I'm very grateful for the experience because it showed me so much that I 
didn't see before going into it and if I do decide to have another baby because I'm not really sure at this stage I thought it would be like yeah let's have another baby because my sister and I are only like 14 months apart and Belle's now nine months and I was like oh I am nowhere near ready to even think about that I'm still healing um, okay so then the birth let me give you a quick overview of the birth and I'll do a full video giving you the full updates okay exciting <laughs> so birthed her at home in the birthing pool unassisted it was free birth so no midwives no medical intervention no of the patriarchy I have to choose my words carefully here the patriarchy fear-mongering I wanted to be in full control and I didn't want anyone to come in and help throw me off course. I wanted to be in alignment, connected to my angels, which I was. I've got goosebumps talking about this. And it was a spiritual transcendence, the ultimate surrender. It was a, it was just, you feel so powerful when you birth a baby. And I had my ancestors who I've never even connected with before, but I've been bringing them in a lot more. Maybe that's part of the initiation of becoming a mom. I'm not really sure. So I had my ancestors there. I had every single spirit that I knew who had crossed over. I had called them in, like everyone. <laughs> I'm talking like my piano teacher, Mrs. Thompson. I had a friend's friend who died of cancer. Um, I had my um, my husband's grandfather was in the room. I had who else oh there was just a lot a lot a lot a lot and there was just my husband and my doula and I physically in the room and it was it's something that you can't really explain but I felt in my power and it was incredible I felt I don't know how, I, I don't know the words for this I don't know how to explain I remember I think I texted my dad and I said it was like the ultimate surrender it was the ultimate transcendence into another universe and I made sure I was so deeply calm I had prepped my mind for success oh the camera keeps going black the lighting keeps changing as I'm moving I'll try and oh I'll try and not move my hands <laughs> um, I even put them in my pockets. Anyways, it was just a really beautiful opportunity to be in my power and to connect with my ancestors. And when Belle was born, she was actually unconscious. And most people would be like, unconscious? Oh my God, now, blah, 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 blah. But I didn't waver in my conviction. I knew that it wasn't going to be a stillbirth. I knew that she was going to be fine. And I resuscitated her. We had to call the emergency. Um, we had to call the ambulance and then they came and it was like they were angels. It wasn't like they were trying to intervene or anything. They were very much like, is Belle fine? Is mum fine? Blah, 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 blah. And then I said goodbye to them, went into the shower and then I birthed my placenta. And then the healing began. <laughs> um, yeah, there was just a lot. I'll talk more about the birth in the video as I said postpartum let's get into postpartum I feel like I wasn't prepared for postpartum I heard a lot of women say you know like this is a really difficult time you need to heal um, rest as much as you can don't walk so I literally stayed resting for a month I stayed in bed for a week and then I moved, no, maybe two weeks, and then I moved onto the couch, and I was on the couch for another two weeks, and I made sure I wasn't walk, walking, I made sure that my vagina was healing, I made sure that I was just being and just allowing my body to do what it needed to do best, because the body is amazing, it's absolutely amazing, it's so wild that like literally after Belle was born, my tummy went straight back down to being flat, like I've got a like a poochy pouchy part now because my stomach wasn't it wasn't flat before but like I had a little belly but not like I wasn't fat or anything you know like and so there's like a little pudgy bit there which I'm kind of like my baby used to live in there you know so there was all of that um what else was there postpartum was kind of hard I feel like 
you know, like we've got the oxytocin, the natural oxytocin going through your body for like two to three days. And I kind of feel like that leads you into a false sense of security when you're like, oh, you know, I'm doing great and this is happening and blah, 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 blah. And then it wears off and then you feel the pain. And it was challenging to say the least. I had about a half a centimeter tear in my perineal when she came out and far out. You try peeing with a cut on your vagina and that was excruciating painful. I'm talking, I would say that that was more painful than the actual labor. Like my labor was 14 hours, right? And this lasted for like 10 days. So every time I needed to pee, I would cry. And I mean, I found out the most perfect position to pee. I was literally peeing in the shower on my, on my hands and knees, but I had my bum tilted up so that the, the urine could then run onto my tummy so it wouldn't run back onto my vagina. I mean, I did everything. I was looking on Pinterest and I was like, people like, oh, you need to do this, 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 and this. I was like, mate, I need to figure out a way to pee without crying. And that was hard. And I don't think I was prepared for that. Um, also, if you do tear in birth, it's totally normal. Your body will repair itself. It just hurts to wee. Um, so just find like a barrier cream to put over it, a natural barrier cream. Um, yeah, so then what else after that? I kind of, yeah, it was just kind of wild. I'm just gonna talk about me. I'm not gonna be talking much about Belle in this part, um, but she is fabulous, by the way. <laughs> I'm not showing her photo on the internet. If you're on my Instagram, you already know, knew about that. I don't think it's my, I don't feel like it's my call to I've got to keep my hands in my pocket. Good Lord, I keep changing the lighting. Um, I don't think it's my place to share her face or her identity until she has consent to make that decision for her. But I'll show you what she looks like from behind. <laughs> um, yeah, she's just cute. Anyways, um, so then all of that happened. And then what I noticed from the moment that she was born, my instincts ramped up to a whole new level of protection that I hadn't even experienced before. And I kind of wasn't, I kind of knew that once she was born, like through her life, that I would have a lot of challenging moments appear based on, you know, somebody who's had childhood trauma, um, have a narcissistic parent uh, who had a codependent marriage. Um, you know, I've done a lot of healing on myself, but I realized that there was a lot of extra healing to do for me as a mother and also healing my mother wound. I didn't even realize I had issues with my mom <laughs> until you become a mom and then it all surfaces. But I'll talk more about that kind of issue in my labor story. Hello, my loves. It's editing Mel popping in. There was a huge part that I totally forgot to tell you. So hang tight. Um, and that was working with our doula. Now we booked her for six weeks for postpartum support. And during that time, she was able to bring meals in accordance to my dietary requirements, which as you heard before in my um, second trimester, when I had interstitial cystitis, there was a lot of things that I couldn't now eat. Um, and she was able to cook for us. Um, which was amazing. Um, and you know what? I could even find a meal delivery service to do that. Um, and she was also able to provide not only emotional support, but to just help out around the house if we needed something done. Um, she was able to look after Belle if I needed to shower or if, you know, towards our last visit, um, I needed to do the regrowth of my hair. So she was able to hold Belle while I was coloring my hair with Hannah. Um, and above all, the emotional support was incredible. She, she, was, she did tarot card readings, no, oracle card readings using this mother's deck that she had. And it was so interesting to see everything that came up um, as I was processing different aspects of my, my birth. Um, and she also offered, she, she's a math masseuse as well. So she gave me weekly massages. Well, every time she came, most of the visits were m m massages for like, an hour or two, it was incredible. Um, obviously I had to stop in between and feed Belle or whatever, but it was just amazing that I didn't have to leave the house. Um, and then she also had a um, closing of the bone ceremony with me. And that was honestly to 
to date the best meditation experience I've ever had. It was incredible, um, which I highly recommend. Um, and that brought a lot to the surface. Um, I literally saw my ancestors sewing my birth field up to be like, okay, we're finished. Like I literally saw them with, it was like animal hide, which is kind of wild, I'm vegan, but it was wild that I saw them like literally sewing my body up and closing the birth field and saying, you know, we're, we're closed, the baby's here now. So there was a lot of things that happened in the meditation. I also saw my um, piano teacher, Mrs. Thompson, playing the piano really, really loud to try and wake Belle up when she came out unconscious. And that just, I just burst into tears when I saw that. And there was just, so much that came up. There was just so much emotional support throughout um, our time together. And I really wish that I had this for a year. <laughs> a year of postpartum care with a doula. Oh man, I'd pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> I think it's priceless really to have that help and support. And now she's like one of my great friends here in Adelaide. So if you're looking for a doula and you're in South Australia, please message me and I'll send you her details. Um, yeah, fabulous, fabulous woman. So Lana, if you're watching, I love you so much. Anyways, my love, back to the video. Um, yeah, hope you're enjoying it. Uh, I've probably got a cup of tea because this is a long video. Anyways, um, yeah, we will see you soon, bye. Oh yeah, I did a tarot card reading before Belle was born and I got some pretty dark cards. I was like, oh shit, what's going on? And yeah, that healing literally started the moment that she was born. And what really scared me in postpartum is that I didn't expect to revert to who I was before I had done my healing. I mean, I was angry. I probably was angry because I was in pain recovering and my body just felt so stiff and I didn't feel like flowiness in my body. I felt just, it was just a really painful recovery to be honest. I'm not going to sugarcoat it because I feel like any woman that has, has given birth, it's their duty of care to tell mothers what it's really like. Um, yeah. I don't know it's just challenging to be honest so what happened was when she was born it brought up a lot of stuff to the surface um, I became not a nice person to be around that's my husband he'll confirm that um, and I'm, I'm quite happy to admit that now because it shows that you can have it figured out and then you become a mum and then you become tired and everything that you have known to be true and everything that makes you feel good, you, you're just struggling to get by in the day and you're struggling to get yourself back into alignment. And I think the constant pain was what I struggled with the most. And that constant pain being there, and I knew that I was vibrating on a negative frequency, but I found it really hard to get out of it. Um, I feel like three months in, when Belle was three months old, I feel like that's when the adrenaline wore off and that's when the cracks really started to to form and then I kind of got to the stage where I was like so impatient, I was like I just want to make a YouTube video, I want to share my birth story and I just couldn't, I just didn't physically have the mental capacity or the time to do that and that really upset me and I just wanted to tell you that I'm fine and I couldn't do it and I and I just kept seeing emails when more people were joining my wait list to join my coaching program to break the cycle of abuse in eight weeks. And I was not doing okay and I felt bad that I couldn't help these people. And I'm like, oh my God, another month's gone by and I haven't even emailed them. Or, you know, I hadn't even emailed anyone on my, on my list to be like, hey guys, peace out, I'm on maternity leave. Like I just, I couldn't do that. Um, yeah kind of wild huh and then what happened after that so after the adrenaline wore off I was just not in a good place and then I progressively as the months went on I noticed how lonely and isolating it is to be a mother to be a mother in this day and age when the world is experiencing a deep and huge awakening which is very traumatic to witness and you absorb that energy so it was like there was so much going on um, especially when you look at the state of Australia right now I have to be careful what I say because the YouTube censorship is off the hook right now videos are being removed left right and center so I can't really talk about that with you 
um, as much as I'd like. <laughs> and then to be quite completely honest, I'm trying to beat around the bush around this, I dropped to the bottom of the emotional guidance scale, 23 suicidal, suicidal thoughts. I literally got to the point where I was like, this is so effing hard. I don't want to be a mum anymore. Like, I've always wanted to be a mum and then being a mum and then being in it, I said to the universe, I was like, like, is, is this my life? Am I always going to be put last? Am I never going to have time to just wash my hair? Am I, how am I ever going to work again when I'm trying to manage my body, my healing and a, a new baby? And how do I even manage a marriage if I'm not even doing good? It's kind of like, it was a lot that came up at the same time and it really upset me that I couldn't be Mel vibrating on the frequency of love. No, this was Mel deep in despair and depression at the bottom of the emotional guidance scale. And, you know, I haven't really told many people about that. Mom, if you're watching, yep, it happened. And I was really good at hiding it. And I was really good at using my baby as, check Mel out, she's super cute, mom, blah, 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 blah. And people were like, how's Mel? Like, oh yeah, Mel and Bella are doing well. And, I really wasn't <laughs> and if you've been in depression you know that you can hide it there are different moments where you can hide it there's definitely some where you can't but I hid it um, and that's just what I did until I admitted where I was and I repeated after the, the affirmation I tell you guys all the time I am where I am and it's okay I am where I am and it's okay I literally said to myself it's okay to have those thoughts like Louise L. Hay says, it's a thought and a thought can be changed. And I got to the point where I was, after I was spiraling and my mind was going wild. And I was like, I know how to get out of this. I know how to get it. I teach women how to do this. I teach them how to reprogram their subconscious. I know how to do it, but I didn't have the brain capacity. I didn't have the space. <sighs> Another thing that I figured out is that I am a projector and human design. Human design is fabulous. Human design is my new love, my new passion. It's like the, the missing link of astrology that I have been looking for for a long time without knowing it. I had so many, I had, oh, Belly Boo's just woken up from her. <laughs> my husband's with her. Um, so yeah, it was just the missing link. And as a projector, I figured out that I have low energy and I get my energy from people and I wasn't I didn't have my energy and that was really really hard for me and I think that's why I wanted to connect with you guys so much because you have been supporting me since 2013 yo 2013 and it upset me that I couldn't connect with you anyways going back to human design oh belly's teething at the moment she's already got two teeth and she's getting her top two um so it was just it was just really challenging for me. I don't know how, I, I'm not, not gonna sugarcoat it. It was challenging. Let me just read you this post that I found on Instagram because I found a whole community of women there that just, it just makes me feel so much better. Anyway, this lady, she's under the, was it this lady? Yeah, the Nerdy Boho, fabulous post. Let me read this. She said, I'll put it on the screen. She, Motherhood is hard. <laughs> it's not a secret, but no one tells you that the hardest part about being a mom has nothing to do with your child at all. It's all about the aspects of your new title. Balancing your work, maintaining your relationship, navigating your hormones, learning to live with your postpartum body, battling with anxiety, working through your guilt, and agonizing over parenting decisions or missteps, operating on little sleep, plus keeping little person safe, and all while trying to figure out who you are now after this monumental, identi monumental identity shift. Oh, I need to talk more about that in a second. Not to mention the isolation that tends to creep in when you least expect it. Those are the hard parts. It's not your kid. It's managing yourself, the new you. It's the part that takes the work. I'm learning and evolving every day, and I have days where I kill it and days where it nearly kills me. When I say motherhood is hard, it is loving your baby and being a loving your baby and being a mom is not that's the easy part and oh what's happening screen so yeah that's the kind of the part that i forgot to talk to you about the identity shift i was like who the fuck am i you know will i ever be able to work again am i 
a mum and that's it. And it's a lot, guys. There were so many other things too. What else do I have on my screen? Oh yeah, there's some fabulous women on Instagram that just share it how it is. This lady called Michelle Lovetree, she wrote a post saying, is like, I'm not in love with motherhood all the time. Oh, that's the thing that I was struggling the most because usually when I don't cope, I like to book an Airbnb for three nights and just go away and just be. And that's how I recalibrate my energy. And I did that just before Belle was born. It was freaking amazing. <laughs> Loved the bathtub and the Airbnb that I stayed at. Um, and I found it hard. I didn't have time to to do all of that internal work because my day was just so fast paced and it still is, but I'm finding that I'm not as tired as I initially was. So that's kind of huge. What else did I have on my screen? Oh yeah, I've kind of said all of those ones. Yeah, it's just wild guys, absolutely wild. And it kind of feels wild that I am admitting that I am, that I struggled with postpartum depression and anxiety and had suicidal thoughts and I keep going back to that Katy Perry song I, um, um, I looked in the mirror and decided to stay gonna let, not gonna let love take me out of that way oh the rainbow da 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 I don't know the full lyrics, but do you know that song from Katy Perry? It was like, I looked in the mirror and I decided to stay and I decided that I'm here. There's a purpose to this. There's a purpose to my pain. There's a reason I'm here and I need, I feel like I need to be helping mums. I feel like my business is going to shift and it probably needs to because I am different now and my priorities are different and I'm, yeah, it feels kind of good to tell you. I just feel shame around that but I know it's okay to feel that I am where I am and it's okay it's okay that I had those thoughts anyways let's talk about breastfeeding because I found my breastfeeding journey up and down there was moments where I was like this is amazing and then there's parts where you feel tapped out and there's others where it just feels such a nourishing thing to be able to do for your baby and I found breastfeeding super easy at the start <laughs> until day three came and your breasts are engorged and like they were so rock hard that I was crying and I had to send Peter to go to the chemist at like nine o'clock at night to get a pump to manually express the milk which hurt like a bitch it was awful absolutely awful um, so yeah, my breastfeeding journey was all over the shop. Um, there was a point where I was about four months where I was ready to give up. I was like, this is too much. And especially when Belle was going through a developmental leap um, or she was teething. And I found that really, really challenging. Um, really challenging, actually. I'm nine months postpartum now. So I'm feeling fine now, but I know she's going to be going through another leap soon. And she's just started getting more teeth in. And when she's first got her first two teeth in she bit on my nipple and I was like get her off Peter I just I couldn't deal with it and a lot of things that came up um, with being a mom is that when your child hurts you not that they mean it um, like being bitten or um, like she pulls my hair let's talk about postpartum hair loss oh my god if I take this off you'll be like all these little mini hairs everywhere I didn't realize hair comes out in clumps it was just wild anyways back to breastfeeding it's just really challenging I found it really challenging I manifested that should be a fabulous like drinker really good latch all of that but I didn't manifest how I was going to feel because you feel tapped out your your boobs are constantly you so like if Peter like brush past me or touch my boobs I would like do not touch me I'm like I'm just like my body is just not mine anymore and I found that really hard and then also like clothing what the freaking hell do you wear as a breastfeeding mum um, you can't really see right now but like this top lifts up so it's like all my dresses forget about that some of my dresses I literally cut oh my door is open no um, I've got to be quick Peter and Belle are out at the library right now and I just thought of something else as I was sitting down to have a little break <laughs> um, what was I going to tell you? 
oh yeah one of my dresses I like cut the arms off and when you wear muscle tees they're fabulous you move them across your boobs and then you can breastfeed and because we co-sleep at night I also wanted stuff on my shoulders for when it was cold but need to be able to pull my my thing across instead of lifting up a big t-shirt or whatever okay so breastfeeding was tricky easy for Belle it was challenging for me the other thing that I was um, forgot to mention in that one as well is that I also found that like being hurt by your child is very was a huge trigger for me um, really big trigger for me like when she would pull my hair I those times I'd just pick her up and put it down I was like Peter I, I, I need a break it's just too much uh, I found that really really hard another thing is like my marriage and how different that is now being a mum and how that's literally taken the back burner it's like number one I'm keeping Belle alive number two I'm now getting more time to look after me and to rebuild myself and now it's like my marriage nine months is now going to be getting attention it's kind of wild hey and I think the one thing that I really struggled with in postpartum and have up until this stage is that I miss my husband I miss having him all to myself I know this sounds really silly I miss being able to it just be us and I miss I just you know he's my favorite person in the whole world and not to be able to spend lots of time with him because you know the moment we wake Bell wakes up our days just keep going like boom 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 until the moment she falls asleep at night and then I'm tired and so I have found that really challenging and I miss him I don't know how to explain it any more than like I just miss my husband and I just saw 444 on the screen right there for his stability finding that stability in that core I've always said our relationship gets better by the day and through postpartum at the beginning it it didn't it wasn't good I feel like I was not coping and I was not a good I was not good within myself which means I wasn't a good wife and now I'm getting to the stage where I'm rebuilding myself which means that I can then start to rebuild the relationship because I have energy for that now so I feel like that's really important and I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about that on the internet and how different your relationship can be and yeah and just honestly just do as much work as you possibly can on yourself before you even get into a relationship and then that will mirror things to you then then you can heal that and then become a solid team so that when you have a child together with someone then your marriage or your relationship can flourish on a whole new level and it's the most beautiful thing when you see your partner playing with your child like it's just absolutely breathtaking and it's just like you know like when Peter puts Belle on the potty because we're, we're not potty we're doing elimination communication I heard it's not potty training if it's before one um, and she just I have her on the bassinet whenever I'd go to the toilet. That's another thing. You can't just take a poo whenever you want or a wee. I would have a bassinet, uh, not the bassinet, a bouncer in the toilet. So every time I need to go to the toilet, if Peter was working or whatever, I would pop her in there and I'm doing the going to the poo and I'm like breathing in, breathing out and trying to teach her how to do her poos. She started doing her poos in a nappy and I was like, oh my God, this girl is fabulous. So I was like, oh, I'll buy a little potty and she can we can do it at the same time and it started working and she's done nearly every single poo we've been doing it for about two weeks so far every single poo she's been doing on the potty which is fabulous um, children are very very intelligent beings um, so yeah elimination communication which is what we wanted to do from birth but hey I was not in the right mindset to do that so that was kind of cool what I forgot to mention is that in my postpartum I noticed that there was a huge disconnect with my healing because I felt that my birth field for when I birthed Belle it was it was fragmented towards the end when she was born unconscious and from that that's when I went into depression and I actually went to a Mayan abdominal therapist what does that mean it's literally an internal it's not sexual you're not going to get turned on or anything like that it's literally an internal to help clear out your pelvic bowl um, I found that was super duper helpful and um, very healing because there were things in there that um, the lady that I went to cleared out she was like oh there's a lot of black color right at the back and I was like well that could have been sexual trauma that could have been of anything 
Um, but then I also read the book Mothering from Your Center, which was given to me from my doula and hands down, buy it. Best book ever. Mothering from Your Center. In that book, there are so many exercises that I apply to reconnect the birth field and realign it with Belle. And I would do it when she would be sleeping. We, do con we used to do contact napping. We still do now, depending on where she's at. Um, and when she was sleeping on me, I was doing the exercises and she ended up having a three hour nap and normally she does an hour and a half and I was like, oh my goodness, there was all of this healing that I was doing on her while she was sleeping, which was kind of wild, but really, really fabulous. Um, and the other thing I have to say is if you know someone that's pregnant or that you are pregnant um, or anyone that's just given birth, whatever it is, the best way to support a mother is to not just pick up someone's baby um, or to demand to see them is to if you're going to see a mum and support them bring food if you don't live near them then find a meal delivery service and have a couple of weeks of meals delivered to them that means more to a mum than any clothing that you can receive which is fabulous but you know Belle didn't wear clothes for a month <laughs> she just wore an abby and that was it um, who else did I see to help me? Oh, go and see a pelvic floor specialist. I saw one twice um, in my mind abdominal therapist. Um, she also specializes in pelvic health, health as well, obviously. And that is so important with regaining your pelvic floor. I also went to see a kinesiologist, but that was more so for Belle. Um, what else did I see? Who else did I see? An osteopath, which I think all of that could was a waste of time to be honest I saw one five uh, two different ones and I saw them around five or six times and all of that could have been um, all of that could have been what's the word counteracted I don't think that's the right word but I if I basically did exercises at home or gone to a physio um, a Pilates studio who specialize, specializes in physiotherapy, like your public floor specialist could do classes or go and find a Pilates studio that specializes in post, postpartum care, especially the first, do you know what I'm trying to say? The earliest you can get to one is, the, is more important or if you don't have access to that, um, check out the app Every Woman, amazing exercises on there um, and they help you to re, re use the muscles again of your pelvic floor because after I had Belle, I literally felt like I'd stand up and my organs would fall out and that's not outside my vagina, but I could feel them fall and they weren't in the right spot. And they're only just starting to become in um, a better spot now that I've been going to reform and Pilates. Um, and I notice it makes a significant difference with bowel movements. The days that I work out, my bowel movements whoosh, just come. Otherwise, um, oh, now we've got the Nutribullet on. <laughs> Mum life. <laughs> Bell's having a smoothie for lunch. Um, otherwise, I would have like a bowel movement just sitting in my butt for a day or so and I just couldn't get it out. So it's so important to use those muscles and to, to get that help. Anyways, there's probably more that I'm missing out, but that's all I can think of right now. But I feel like I need to pull you guys a tarot card and just to see how you're going because you're not chatting back to me real time. <laughs> but I hope you're on the live chat or you're commenting something down below so I can feel your energy, but let's just see where you're at and how have you been? Oh, wow. You got quite a pile here. So let's have a look. All right, oh, so you have the two of wands reversed. So the two of wands is basically a card of like <sighs> dreaming of, like you're daring to dream, but you feel resistance in your vibration. It's like, well, obviously travel. There's the world around the world, around the world. But there's also like a combi event. So I feel like there's adventure, but the adventure has been like halted and you kind of feel like stagnant. That's kind of where you're at. You got the lover's card. So something to do with romance. This could also be platonic, platonic love. This could be love with yourself, love for other people, manifesting a partner, whatever it is. Four of Wands. That's a celebration. Oh, Nine of Pentacles reverse. This is a card of like luxury and vitality, but it's turned around. What else have we got? The strength card. Oh shit, and the reverse. Okay, so you've been on quite a journey. Same as me too. I kind of feel like 
we were in the same going through the same thing like there was either delusions or deceptions not really delusions or deceptions timelines adventure things that were skewed and that kind of impacted you your self-esteem your self-esteem and your relationships and there's something else but I can't think of it because Belle's laughing out there <laughs> um, and you wanted to be able to celebrate and you wanted to be like this it's like maybe you had to find this new version of you and you had to emerge kind of feel like my earrings oh my hair's coming out no um, I kind of feel like my earrings kind of illustrate the rebirth of us do you believe we got the re you got the rebirth card and you have the strength to do it so I wonder that's how you've been let's see let's see where you're going it's eclipse season Woo! eclipse season oh my god eclipses are karmic events that set us up for the next six months well years really I got pregnant in an eclipse I got engaged on an eclipse and wonder what's coming up for you so you, this is a rebirth you had to the old you had to die and that's hard oh my god that's so hard I did an Instagram post let me find it I'm on my computer underneath you by the way you can't see it I wrote a post on Instagram a while ago June 1st I wrote this I said it's okay to mourn the loss of who you used to be change is flipping hard what's truly beautiful is that's what's waiting for you on the other side of what feels like this never-ending shit storm is actually more amazing than you ever could have possibly imagined hang in there so I kind of feel like that's where you're at you're mourning the loss of who you used to be and you want to be going out and being active and doing this that makes you feel good it's kind of like the freedom you miss your freedom and some of you maybe because you're missing your freedom it's like well I can't just go out and date people or my relationship has changed or there's something about love or this could be love for yourself you know you don't need a dude oh um, and the celebration has shifted but I kind of feel like you're now celebrating but I feel like yeah you're kind of in like the despair part and not really knowing what to do what is happening with the lighting I don't know how to work cameras anymore, dude. There we go, much better. Um, and that you couldn't put on your party dress and you couldn't dress up and you couldn't do those things because life has shifted, but you found the strength to rebuild this new fabulous you. All right, let's see where you're going for the eclipse. Where are they going? Oh, yes, yes. For a pentacle, so you're finally like, but then she's somebody who's, who's worked hard and she's holding it close to her chest because it's a heart chakra too. She's holding it close to her heart because she feels worthy. She feels worthy of it. Oh yes, there's a lot that happened from, that's going to be coming from the, the Nine of Cups. That is a beautiful, beautiful card of, of, of deep emotional work that you've done. It's kind of like when Ariel gets her legs in The Little Mermaid, that's kind of what I feel. The Hermit card is that as things are shifting, you will have to keep going back to your deep introspection, which is your meditation, your journaling, your tarot, whatever it needs to do. You need to pull back in as you are assimilating with this new fabulous you that's becoming. Knight of Cups, you're wearing your heart on your sleeve. You're like, dude, I am where I am and it's okay. <laughs> the Hanged Man, you're looking at life completely different. And this is the Fear card. It's no longer ruling your life. I said I was going to pull one card, but I did a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1 and 2 is 3. 3 is the Trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, the body, the mind, and the soul. Divinely connected you. You're going to be fine. <laughs> That's basically what I'm saying which is great to hear but I knew that you would but we're we're just mourning the loss of who we used to be and that is challenging and it's unsettling and it is uncomfortable it's not easy to just sit with yourself and be like oh my god why is this happening it's like I know how that feels instead of going like what's the lesson I know that there's a lesson there's a purpose to my pain there's a purpose to my pain why do I keep saying that maybe I'm going to be doing I've been figuring, I've been trying to figure out for three years what to call my coaching program. It doesn't have a name. I don't think that's it, but anyways, that's where we're at. Should we do a deep breath in again? <laughs> Breathe in. Breathe out. 
All right, my loves, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was so good to hang out with you. It's been a while since I've seen your face. I really hope you're doing well. Well, I know you're going to be doing well. I've just seen your cards. But um, yeah, thanks for sticking with me through this rambled kind of video. Um, if you have any questions or anything coming up, can you write me a comment below? I would love to hear from you. And I just want to say thanks again for coming back and for making it to the end of this video because I truly, truly appreciate you and it's been a long time coming and I, it feels good to be able to share and to not... Because when you share, it, you take the power away. You, no, you're not, you take back your power and it just feels good to say, I am where I am and it's okay. More than the loss of who I used to be, but I'm becoming even more fabulous, even more fierce. Um, and then I hear, spread your wings and fly. Um, what's that butterfly song from? Oh, let me just type it in my computer. Butterfly. Um, spread your wings and fly. Dun, 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 dun. Delta Goodrum. There's lyrics in there that you need to hear. Let me just find the lyrics. What's the lyrics? Internet? Hold on, guys. I won't hurt you. I'll protect you. I won't let the rain fall down. I'll always be around. And baby, I will understand if sometimes you just need to spread your wings and fly and let your colors shine. And every day I want to be a risk you take, make a promise that will never break for life. You're my butterfly, don't fly away. Open your arms, you're free. Pray you'll come back to me. You're my butterfly. Mm. No, you're coming back to yourself. You know, you get bits from the thing. How does this actually go? I won't be able to play it because YouTube will flag it. I, don't, I can't think of how the melody goes, but I'm sure it's good. Oh, and you've changed color again. Well, I've changed color again. Anyways, my love, thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned. Make sure you turn on notifications, that little bell thing. Um, I don't know when I'm posting the next video, but hopefully it's soon. And I will talk to you soon. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, I just moved the camera. Ah, I'm not really good at this anymore. Bye. <laughs>